in the male-dominated field of mathematics. And so I'm often asked about gender issues in maths, in STEM, and beyond. And so I'd like to tell you what I think about that, which is the subject of my new book, X Plus Y, A Mathematician's Manifesto for Rethinking Gender. When I began my career as a pure mathematician, I decided to hide all signs of femininity so that the completely male environment around me would not have a chance to stereotype me and say that I wasn't good enough because I was a woman. I had never had a single, I had never had any pure maths professor who was a woman. The first conference I went to had a hundred people and three of them were women. Finally, when I got tenure and felt more secure in my position, I decided to start trying to get in touch with my femininity a little bit but only outside work. And so I had this weird double life where I was kind of feminine at parties, but never in the department. And that got a bit tiresome. So I decided to try and bring my femininity to work sometimes. And what I discovered was that I hated my job. So I quit. Slightly longer story than that, but that's basically what happened. And I built myself my new current portfolio career where I teach maths, abstract maths to art students at the School of the Arts Institute of Chicago. I write books and columns bringing maths to a wider audience. I visit schools, I do outreach, I talk to teachers, I help children, I give concerts, I make mathematical art installations. And after a few years of doing that, I thought, my narrative about my life makes no sense. I am a female person, and so everything I do is feminine. I realized that we need a better way to talk about these things. And that's what led to my new book. I drew on my experience as a mathematician, but also my expertise in abstract mathematical thinking to address this problem. And the problem I think is this, that we associate character with gender when it need not be associated. And then we overvalue the traits that are associated with men, such as confidence, ambition, risk-taking, and we tell women that they need to learn those behaviors or just accept being less successful. But also, we criticize women when they do do those behaviors. So if a woman actually is ambitious and confident, and, um, uh, then they, they get criticized for being pushy or arrogant. And this doesn't work that well for men either, because we put pressure on men to be macho or something. And in some places, men are declining to wear masks or refusing to wear masks because they think it's unmanly. What does that even mean? We also get stuck in debates about nature versus nurture. So some people think that man are, men are just biologically hardwired with the characteristics that are good for success so that we just shouldn't ever expect, expect women to be as successful. And other people think that actually it's nurture, that men do have more of those characteristics, but it's because they've been socialized and, we, and brought up that way. And therefore, we should teach women to be more like that so that they can be more successful too. I don't think that either of those approaches is right. Even if there are biological differences between men and women, we still need to rethink which traits we're valuing at the moment in society and whether that is productive. Or are we excluding the wrong people? And I think we're excluding the wrong people. I think we're excluding people who are collaborative, cooperative, nurturing, people who are self-aware and have self-doubt, and that makes them work harder to get better at things. People who take the criticism of other people seriously rather than dismissing it. People who care what others think, who are sensitive, who help other people rather than trampling on them. I think that we need to disassociate character from gender and that when we've done that, we can think more clearly about which traits to value in anyone of any gender. The gendered characterizations are oppressive and obstructive and there ends up being stigma attached. If we use masculine as a word to describe behavior, then if a woman does something masculine, it automatically sounds like something is wrong. Just like if we say a man does something feminine, then something has gone wrong. We need new ungendered terminology to talk about character traits. 
So I thought about it for several years. And finally, I came up with some new words that I'm proposing to use. And those new words are ingressive and congressive. Ingressive is to signify going into things and congressive is to signify bringing things together. Now, the first thing I want to stress is that it's not just a dichotomy between two things and it's not even a continuum from one end to another. I'm a higher dimensional mathematician and I always think in higher dimensions. So I think that it's a higher dimensional situation. So I'd like to show you a picture of how I view it. Let me see if I can share my screen. This is a picture of how I view this two-dimensional continuum, maybe a higher dimensional continuum. If you imagine that the red direction is the ingressive direction and the blue direction is the congressive direction. So you can see that there's a very red corner and a very blue corner, but then there's all this merging in the middle and you can be not very much of either, or you can be a lot of both and crucially, you can move around this square during the course of your life. And you can even move during the course of a day. So you can be different things at different times in different situations. It's not a fixed characteristic, it's a description of behavior. So here are some ways that I characterize these things. I think of ingressive behavior as focusing on oneself rather than on society and people around you and community. It's about imposing on people rather than taking others into account. It's about independence and individualism rather than interdependence and connectedness. And we see that with this mask wearing issue because some people think that wearing a mask is all about your individual risk and how much you're willing to take for yourself, forgetting that we're all connected and that if you don't wear a mask, it has an impact on the people around you. Ingressive behavior is about being competitive and adversarial rather than collaborative and cooperative. And it's about being selective and single track in your thinking and your behavior rather than circumspect and taking many things into account. Once I have this terminology, I can rephrase my whole narrative about myself like this, which is that when I began as a mathematician, I found that the environment was really ingressive. And I decided, I felt like I had to be as ingressive as possible, to learn to be as ingressive as possible in order to be successful. So I did that, but then I wanted to become more congressive. So I tried to be more congressive in that career and I just found that it wasn't compatible. So I left and built myself my own congressive career. And the thing is that that's all very well and that was what happened to me in mathematics and in academia. But I think it's happening beyond that. I think it's happening in society more broadly that the whole of society rewards ingressivity, even though congressivity is better for us. It happens in education, which is so much about ranking people. And in particular, it happens in maths education. I think maths is presented in a particularly ingressive way, all about rules and getting the right answer and tests and speed and competitiveness, when research maths isn't like that at all. Moreover, I think that the ingressive environment leads to gender imbalance because currently, not inherently, but currently, I think that women are more likely to be congressive and thus more likely to be put off an ingressive environment. And in the past, what we would have done is get women to be more ingressive. But I think that what we should do instead is get the environment to be more congressive. And not just in maths and education, in everything, business, politics, we use ingressive filters like job applications and elections. And so we select ingressive people. But I think congressive people make better mathematicians, actually, and better managers and better world leaders. And I think we're filtering out the wrong people. Now, this might sound a bit like the people who say, oh, actually, women are better at things. And so men should learn to be more like women. But that is still stuck in one dimensional gendered thinking. And I think we need to escape that. It causes a backlash where some people think there's a war on masculinity, which there isn't. I'm also crucially not saying that we should be gender blind, just like we shouldn't be race blind. There are still direct prejudices that people have in the world and direct inequalities that we need to address directly. But what I'm saying is that when it's not about gender, we shouldn't talk about gender. So we can separate these issues out. Talk about gender when it is about gender and not when it isn't. And I found that this helps me at all levels, in my teaching, in my personal relationships, and in my self-talk. 
So for example, previously I might have had to say, I need to think of a maths outreach activity that will appeal to girls, which sounds stupid and it is stupid. Whereas now I can say, I would like to think of a congressive maths activity. If I receive an ingressive email, I can think of a congressive way of responding. I can dream up how to have a congressive research community, how to have a congressive society all over. Now you might wonder how it's possible for us to move to becoming more congressive while society is still ingressive. And that's a good question. And I've spent the last few years learning how to do that and unlearning my learnt ingressive behavior. You know, the kind of thing where if someone makes a derogatory comment at you, you try and think of the most scathing possible comeback, which is not actually very helpful. So if there's one thing you take away from what I'm saying, uh, one thing that you can put into practice immediately, maybe it's this, that if you feel some ingressive energy coming at you, you have three choices. I used to think I had two choices, that I either had to come at it with ingressive energy right back, but that escalates the ingressive energy in the world. Or I thought I just had to let it happen, be passive, but that enables the ingressive energy in the world. There is a third way, and that is to neutralize the ingressive energy. That's the congressive way, to open up a congressive space where everyone can interact productively. And what I found is that, of course, some people are really terrible and, and it won't help, but most people aren't. And most people have just learned too much ingressive behavior as well. And that if you open up a congressive space, then they're very happy to have a much more productive conversation there. I truly believe that if we start small and gradually scale this up, we can come together to build a more congressive society and it will be better for everyone of all genders. Thanks.